Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. Here's what you'll learn how to multiply fractions and mixed numbers. Let's start with multiplying fractions. Multiplying fractions is a simple three step process. Step 1 multiply the numerators together to get a new numerator. Step 2 multiply the denominators together to get a new denominator. And step 3, always reduce your fractions to their simplest form. Let's take a look at some examples together. Let's solve 3 sevenths times 2 elevenths and we'll express our answer in simplest form. First, let's write down the expression 3 sevenths times 2 elevenths. Next, multiply the numerators 3 and 2 together to get a new numerator in our answer of 6. Multiply the denominators 7 and 11 together to get a new denominator in our answer of 77. Now, let's see if we can reduce the fraction. It turns out there are no factors greater than 1 in common with 6 and 77. So our answer 6 over 77 is already in simplest form. Now let's solve negative 12 times 2 thirds. First write down the expression negative 12 times 2 thirds. And let's express the number negative 12 as a fraction. Remember all rational numbers can be expressed as fractions. So putting negative 12 over 1 turns negative 12 into a fraction. So let's go ahead and rewrite the problem now as negative 12 over 1 and then of course we still have to multiply by 2 thirds. Next multiply the numerators negative 12 and 2 together. That's going to give us negative 24 in the numerator of our answer. And then multiply the denominators 1 and 3 together to give us a 3 in the denominator of our answer. Now our fraction can be simplified because negative 24 and 3 share a common factor. The largest factor that will divide evenly into negative 24 and 3 is 3. So we're going to divide the numerator by 3 and the denominator by 3. Negative 24 divided by 3 is negative 8. So our numerator reduces down to negative 8. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So our denominator reduces down to 1. Now finally, any number divided by 1 is just that number. So negative 8 divided by 1 is our answer, negative 8. Now let's solve 15 over 17 times 7 over 45. Again, express the answer in simplest form. First, let's write down the expression. 15 over 17 times 7 over 45. This time, before we multiply numerators and denominators together, because we have some large numbers here, let's see if we can reduce some of these numbers at the start. That way, we'll have easier numbers to multiply with and we won't have to reduce our answer at the end. So take a look at the numbers in the numerator and denominator. Do any of the numbers have common factors? I'll give you a couple of seconds to look at that. The answer is yes. 15 and 45 have a common factor, the number 15. So let's reduce both numbers by dividing each by 15. 15 divided by 15 is 1. So the 15 in the numerator now becomes a 1. And 45 divided by 15 is 3. So the 45 in the denominator becomes a 3. Are there any other numbers, top and bottom, that we'll reduce? This time the answer is no. So now when we multiply, the numbers we're multiplying by are easier because they're smaller and our answer will already be in simplest form. So let's go ahead and multiply the numerators 1 and 7 
That's going to give us a 7 in the numerator of our answer. And then multiply the denominators, 17 and 3, which gives us 51 in the denominator of our answer. And since it's already in simplest form, we know the answer is 7 over 51. Now let's multiply three fractions together. Let's solve negative one-half times two-thirds times six-sevenths. And once again, express your answer in simplest form. We're going to start by writing down the expression negative one-half times two-thirds and then multiplied by six-sevenths. Now, can we reduce any numbers in the numerator with a number in the denominator before we start to multiply? These numbers aren't large anyway, but if we can make them smaller, our multiplication will become easier. The answer is yes. We have a couple of twos top and bottom that will cancel. Dividing each two by two gives us a one. So when we divide the numerator two by two, we get one. Divide the denominator two by two, that becomes a one. Now, are there any other numbers in the numerator and denominator that have a common factor? Again, the answer is yes. The 3 and 6 have a common factor of 3. So let's go ahead and divide 3 by 3. That's going to change the 3 into a 1. And let's divide the 6 by 3. That's going to change the 6 into a 2. Now, are there any other numbers in the numerator and denominator with a common factor? The answer is no. So now we're ready to multiply, and our answer will already be in simplest form. Before we start to multiply, we're going to ignore the negative sign on the first fraction. And the numerator is 1 times 1 times 2, so our numerator in the answer will be a 2. And the denominator is 1 times 1 times 7, so the denominator in our answer will be a 7. Now the first fraction is negative and the second fraction is positive. When we multiply them, we know a negative times a positive is a negative. And when we multiply that negative answer by the third fraction, which is positive, that will still give us a negative answer. So our answer is negative 2 sevenths. Now let's look at multiplying mixed numbers. Multiplying mixed numbers is a simple four-step process. Step one, we're going to convert mixed numbers into improper fractions. Step two, multiply the numerators together and get a new numerator. Multiply the denominators together to get a new denominator. That's step three. And step four, always reduce your fractions to their simplest form. Now let's take a look at some examples of multiplying mixed numbers. Let's solve three quarters times two and three fifths. And once again, we're going to express the answer in simplest form. First, let's write down the expression. Three quarters times two and three fifths. Now, I'm going to recopy the first fraction because what we're going to need to do is turn the mixed number 2 and 3 fifths into an improper fraction. So let's start rewriting this. So I'll put 3 quarters as our first fraction and we know we're going to multiply that by an improper fraction. Now how do we get an improper fraction out of a mixed number? Here's what you do. You multiply the denominator and the whole number together. So we're going to multiply the 5 and the 2 together. That's going to give us 10 but then we also add the numerator, 3, to give us a new numerator for that fraction of 13. And the denominator will remain a 5. So 13 over 5 is exactly the same as 2 and 3 fifths. Now take a look at the fractions. Can we reduce any numbers in the numerator with a number in the denominator before we multiply? No, we can't. There are no common factors between 3 and 4 or 5, nor are there any common factors between 13 and 4 or 5. So let's just go ahead and multiply the numerators. 13 and 3 together 
That's going to give us a 39 in the numerator of our answer. And then multiply the denominators, 4 and 5 together, that's going to give us 20 in the denominator of our answer. Now, we're not going to leave our answer as an improper fraction. We're going to turn improper fractions back into mixed numbers. And here's how we do that. Just divide 39 by 20. How many times does 20 go into 39? Once, and it gives us a remainder of 19. So our whole number is 1, and the fraction portion will be the remainder 19 over what we divided by, which is 20. So our answer is 1 and 19 twentieths. Now let's solve negative 5 and 1 seventh multiplied by negative 3 and 4 ninths. First write down the expression, negative 5 and 1 seventh times negative 3 and 4 ninths. We're going to turn both mixed numbers into improper fractions. So 5 and 1 seventh, let's go ahead and do that one first. Ignore the negative sign when we do this. The denominator times the whole number, 7 times 5, is going to give you 35. Then we have to add the numerator, 1. That gives us 36. Now add the negative back into our answer, so we end up with a negative 36, and the denominator will remain 7. So negative 36 over 7 is exactly the same as negative 5 and 1 7. Now let's do the same thing for the second mixed number. Turn that mixed number, negative 3 and 4 ninths, into an improper fraction. Again, ignore the negative sign to start. And we have 9 times 3, which is 27. And then we have to add the numerator 4 to give us 31. Now add the negative back to our answer. So we have a negative 31 in the numerator. And of course, the denominator will remain 9. Now, can we reduce any numbers in the numerator with a number in the denominator before we multiply? We've got some big numbers here, so if we can reduce anything, it will help us solve the problem easier. The answer is yes. 9 and 36 have a common factor of 9. So we can divide negative 36 by 9. That reduces it to a negative 4. And of course, then dividing 9 by 9 reduces the 9 to a 1. Those are the only numbers that can be reduced. So when we multiply, our answer will now be in simplest form. Our new numerator will be 4 times 31, which is 124. And a negative times a negative makes our numerator a positive 124. And our new denominator will be 7 times 1, which is 7. Finally, let's turn that improper fraction back into a mixed number. Simply divide 124 by 7. How many times does 7 go into 124? Did you get 17? Because that would be right. And a remainder of 5. So our whole number is 17, and the fraction portion will be 5 over our denominator of 7. Then the answer is 17 and 5 sevenths. Now let's wrap up this lesson with a word problem. Tennis shoes, regularly priced at $40, are on sale for three-fifths of their regular price. What is the sale price of the shoes? Well, first, we need to create an expression to solve. The sale price is three-fifths of $40. Now, remember, of means multiply in math. So, we're going to multiply 40 and three-fifths to get our answer. So, let's set up the problem. 40 times three-fifths. Now, let's turn 40 into a fraction by placing it over 1. So I'll rewrite the problem as 40 over 1. And of course, we're still multiplying by 3 fifths. 
Now, can we reduce any numbers in the numerator with a number in the denominator before we start multiplying? Take a look at the numbers. The answer is yes. 40 and 5 have a common factor of 5. So let's go ahead and divide 40 by 5. That's going to reduce the 40 to an 8. And let's divide 5 by 5. That changes the 5 to a 1. Now our numerator is just 8 times 3, which gives us a 24 in the numerator of our answer. And the denominator is 1 times 1, which of course is just 1. And again, any number divided by 1 is just that number, so our answer is 24. The sale price of the tennis shoes is $24. Congratulations! You've learned how to multiply fractions and mixed numbers.